Now I've got this really yellow burner hooked up to a temporary oil supply. This is kerosene, it's a kerosene burner and uh, it's supposed to work, you know, set up a little flame here, but it's just not doing it. It's not doing it properly at least anyway, and it's cutting out. So it's running for a few seconds, bop, and then just stops. I'm gonna show you the problem now and I'm gonna show you how I fix it. Here we go. Now I have the power on, it's gone to reset. There's a little button on the back here. I'll show you that in a minute. But uh, just for now, I'm gonna press it and you'll see the problem. You'll see it on this GoPro. So it's purging. And any time now, there we go. You know, obviously something wrong there. So it got up to eight bar of pressure, which is right, but um, it just didn't catch. You know, the flame is off out here, it's, it's detached. So I'm gonna show you how I sort that out now. We're gonna start by changing the nozzle. So first off, take off the blast tube. I've already loosened the screws on this, so I'm gonna do that fairly quickly. So, there we go, that's the blast tube off. It's on stainless steel screws, so they shouldn't rust. And uh, you can see some unborn fuel in there, so it's just it's spraying too far out. The obvious culprit on this one is the nozzle, so we're going to change out the nozzle. Now to get out the nozzle we have to take a few parts off it. So we need a um, 4mm Allen key. Just loosen the Allen bolt. Slide the electrode forward and we have to undo the wires on the back of the electrodes. Make sure you're plugged out when you do this. Right, and it comes off and it looks like that. Make sure the little hole in this is clear, you know, that you can see through it because the photo cell in there needs to look through that hole as well to see the flame. But anyway, that's what it looks like. Okay, now we're going to get at the nozzle. So this is a quick change. Now to get the nozzle out, we need a 19 and a 16 spanner. So 19 spanner on the main bit, you don't want to go force and anything, so hold that. And 16 spanner on the nozzle. And that's it. Once you break the seal, That's the nozzle out, okay? So it's a 60 EH on this one. And literally, we're just gonna wind it in. Now I check the pressure. The pressure is eight bar on this, which is supposed to be. Again, 19 and a 16 spanner. And that's it, tight enough on that. So now we're just gonna assemble it all again. Okay, slide this on first and then connect up your electrodes because the electrode wires might be long enough to do it off the body. Okay, there's one on. And the second one then, hopefully you can see it. Okay, they're like two bullet connectors, they just slide on. And then we're just going to slide that back into position. So, now there's a little um, hollow for this bolt to sit into. So you can kind of feel around for it. And that's it. Don't go metal tight on you. You don't want to go breaking the electrodes. Okay, so at this stage now, all I've done is change the nozzle. I didn't do anything else yet. So we're going to slide this on. Blast tube back on. I don't need it tight because I might need it off again. So we're going to fire it up again. So power on. Okay, so it should look a bit better this time. So just changing out the nozzle got the burner working. The other nozzle looked perfect, didn't look like there was anything wrong with it, it was getting good oil. For whatever reason it got contaminated anyway and stopped working. So I'm going to show you how I test for pressure. I have the pressure set at about 8, well at 8 bar and, um, and then you adjust the air screw from there. Uh, I need to adjust this in the actual burner unit itself but for now it's working and continuously. Whereas in the actual unit it was um, pulsing and staying off longer than it was staying on. So that's it fixed. Show you how I do the, um, the pressure test now. Now to do a pressure test, you're gonna need a gauge. Okay, so 
you can guess that pressure but um you know you, you never know it has to be eight bar so i have my oil switched off and i just undo this with a four mil allen key okay so i have the screw and the washer the bleed screw so now we put our gauge in this one they don't have to look like this but this one has a valve on it and i'm just going to wind her in Okay, let's fire this again. Okay, so it's bang on 8 bar. But just to show you the pressure. So if I tighten that in, up to nine bar or, and so on if I, if I wind it out so i'm just bringing it out and it's on eight bar there so that's it wind it in for more pressure wind it out for less that's seven bring it up to eight now there's eight bar now So that's it, for more pressure you wind it in, for less pressure you wind it out. Hopefully you can hear me over it. So it looks okay, it's burning continuously, the flame is a little bit yellow, I'll adjust it for air in the actual unit itself. Hopefully you can hear me over this. So adjust it for air, I'm going to show you now. Okay, here's the air screw. And uh, it's got numbers on it. If I go anti-clockwise, it gives it less air. Down on two now. You'll see a change in the flame one and a half there you can see the flame getting longer it's, it's looking for more air so we'll just wind it clockwise now going up on two and you can see the flame there we'll just a bit more air so we're up on three now at that and that's what it looks like so I'll go with that I'll put it in the unit on three and then adjust the air inside the actual boiler well, that's it, she's working. Successful fix. So I've powered it off now as if the time clock has switched it off. And when I switch it back on, it should just want to go back on without me having to press any buttons. But we'll just give it a few seconds. So it comes on for about 20 seconds and the blower, you know, is supposed to evacuate the, um, the chamber, you know, so there's no explosions, there's no gas dwelling when it comes back on. So when I put it on, it's a fan only. So I can actually feel the air out the front of that. You want to wind your hand now. And it does that for about 20 seconds and then something clicks in. There she goes. So I'm going to pull out my gauge now and just put the little bleed screw back in it. So turn off the oil so I don't lose any of that. And undo this whole thing. Now, just put this thing back in. Careful not to cross thread it. Should go in very easy, which it does. Don't need to go mental tight on it, the little O-ring will seal it at the end. Okay, so to disconnect it, you can do it at the pump, which is here, that's a 15 mil spanner, you just loosen that, I'll just show you. And literally, you just crack it, and that's it, you can rotate this any way you want. For me though, the, I brought the hose with it, so I'm leaving that hose on, I'm going to disconnect it from my barrel. So my oil is off. Now, I'm just going to hold the valve. I made this barrel a while ago, it's, it's actually very good, it's great for this sort of stuff. And that's it. Now there's kerosene in this tube, so if you're carrying it in the car or whatever, it doesn't matter in the shed. Like. So look, these Riello burners are a fantastic little burner. They're used in lots and lots of boilers in Europe here. And in Ireland, they're used everywhere. So if it's not a gas boiler, chances are it's one of these. So look, I'm going to leave it there for now. If you like the video, please thumbs up. Subscribe down here. The numbers are growing, which I say all the time because I'm amazed by it. And look, I'll see you all in the next video. Bye for now. Good luck.